the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, live. You're down with Rappaport, yes I am. 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 You better tune in, IamRappaport.com. Cause every single podcast, you know he drops bombs. I seen him on set, a seasoned vet with true talent. Catch him on his way to CrossFit, rocking the new balance. He asked me to do the track, cause he know I rhyme elite. But I'm just waiting for the Robert De Niro line of the week. Breakfast of champions, toasted bagel, cream cheese, and locks. This is I Am Rappaport. The show never stops. We might catch him out in public, stretching his knees. But if you don't listen to the show, yo, wiggle, wiggle please. please. Wiggle, 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 please. please. This is the I Am Rappaport Podcast. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Listen, it's the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast in prime time. We're just going to get right to it. It's prime time podcast and the closest thing we have to a live immediate podcast directly to you the i am rapport stereo podcast listeners aka the wrap up pack we're just going to start with why nba action is fantastic dame dollar damien lillard big dick style that's what it was last night that is the essence of big Dick style. He shut down the Oklahoma City Thunder in vicious, vicious, breathtaking, dramatic fashion last night. We've all seen the clip over and over and over. Um, I mean, yo, listen, people talk about legacies, people talk about championships. Everybody wants to win a championship. Uh, You're listening to a championship podcaster. I get it. I understand. Okay? Everybody wants those rings and things. Uh, But in the NBA, there's only one champion every single year. Only one. Okay? There's only one team that wins the chip. And usually, we can't even remember who they beat. You just got... You just remember who collects the fucking rings. Now, of course... I remember last year, the Golden State Warriors, they swept the Cleveland Cavaliers. I remember that. That's etched in my memory personally. And of course, I remember that the year before, they uh, uh, did a gentleman's sweep versus the Cleveland Cavaliers when they beat them four games to one uh, because I was involved with that. I brought a broom to the arena in Cleveland. I can't remember the name of that shithole. Um, But I said it once. I said it a million times. Okay? People talk about... uh, legacies, uh, people talk about uh, uh, championships. Again, there's nothing wrong, uh, uh, there's no shame uh, in wanting to get a championship. But when you talk about a person's legacy, whether it's Gary Payton, okay, who won a ring with the Miami Heat, no one, you have to like, oh yeah, he won a ring with the Miami Heat. When you think about his legacy, busting people's ass, they lost the NBA championship to Michael Jordan and them. You think about Charles Barkley, the same thing. Allen Iverson, the same thing. Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone. There's plenty of players who played fantastic careers with no shame in their game that do not have championships. Dame Lillard's legacy, whether he ever wins a ring or not, in his career, he's in the prime of his career, he's not going anywhere, will be... What we saw last night, it'll be everything that we've seen in his career as a Portland trailblazer. The guy's legacy will bring, the Dame Dollar's legacy will be that he brings joy, he brings sunshine to Portland. There's never any sunshine during basketball season in Portland. It's always raining. It always feels like there's going to be more rain. The guy brings joy. He brings the sun out every single time he gets on the court that's his fucking legacy so yes yes you want to see him get a championship just like you want to see Russell Westbrook get a championship he deserves it just like you wanted to see Kevin Durant get a championship he deserves it but not everybody gets those fucking rings and things Allen Iverson no rings no things Carmelo Anthony he's not even in the NBA 
There's plenty of great players that are never going to get the fucking championship. It, for, for me, that has nothing to do with your legacy. It has absolute... Reggie Miller. Yo, you think you wanted to compete against Reggie Miller? You, you think that was fun? Going after Reggie Miller? He didn't win shit. Kobe and them fucked him. Plenty of great players will never win. Let me say, imagine you play 15 seasons in the NBA. And unless you're LeBron James, probably 12 of them, maybe if you're like an elite, elite player, are at an all-star level, right? Uh, uh, and then you got two or three more because you're just that great. There's 15 championships. You're lucky if you compete for a couple of those championships, if not ever won Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers may never play for a ring but his personal legacy is that he busts people's ass CJ McCollum whose nickname is now I've never made an all-star game his name is CJ I've never made an all-star game McCollum those guys are a fucking sick tandem and hopefully one day they will get over the top but as far as the legacy you ain't got to prove shit to me. Neither one of those guys. CJ's putting up big shots, big points. Dame Dollar fucked him right off the court. Big dick style. Shout out to Ghost Face Killer. Um, that's a song, that's a lyric from, I, I believe it's Ice Cream, the Wu-Tang song. Um, Ice Cream, or is that a Method Man song uh, uh, that they're all on? I, I think it's a, 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 a Wu-Tang song, Ice Cream. Um, where uh, he says, lounging, big dick style, peace, your highness. Anyway, the NBA is in full swing. NBA action is fantastic. Yes, the Philadelphia 76ers beat the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, they're just a better team, better players. Um, shout out to the Brooklyn Nets, D'Angelo Russell, uh, Carice Levert, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared uh, with the Afro, Afro man Jared, um, and the Brooklyn fans. I, I'm really excited about Brooklyn basketball. And again, I've said it once, I've said it a million times, I don't have a, a church and state when it comes to my New York sports. I'm a New York Giants fan. I want to see Le'Veon Bell kick ass. If the Giants play the Jets, I'm going to root for the Giants. But I want to see the Jets kick ass. I'm not a baseball fan, but I always want to see the Mets do well. But I'm a Yankees fan. I'm a Knicks fan. Okay, but I want to see the Brooklyn Nets kick ass. I want to see that franchise grow, and it's a sexy place to play. If you don't understand the logistics of New York City, um, the New York Knicks, they all live in the suburbs. Their practice facility is not in Manhattan. It is not nearby the greatest, most famous arena in the world, Madison Square Garden, the Mecca. Okay, the practice facility is 45 minutes at best. 45 minutes outside of Manhattan at best. If there's no traffic, you can make it from their practice facility into Manhattan in 45 minutes, maybe 30 if you're like driving at 3 a.m. in the morning when there's absolutely no traffic. But the New York Knicks, they live in the suburbs. If you play for the Brooklyn Nets, you live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is a dope, cool part of New York City that is on the rise. We all know the history of Brooklyn, Brooklyn MCs, okay? You see Williamsburg, you see the show Girls with Lena Dunham, all that fly, sexy shit if you're a young star, D'Angelo Russell. And, and don't, be, don't be fooled, D'Angelo Russell is a young, under-the-radar, up-and-coming NBA coxman. Trust me when I tell you this. Look at him. He lives in Brooklyn. He's the star of the Brooklyn Nets. Okay? He's got the eyebrows. He's a young, up-and-coming coxman in New York City. He don't have to uh, leave the city. He's 15 minutes away from Soho. He's 10 minutes away from Lower Manhattan. Brooklyn is right there next to Manhattan. And there's so much fly dope shit going on in Brooklyn. I am just saying it is a very dope, cool, under-the-radar, super sexy New York dream if you are living in Brooklyn, playing for the Brooklyn Nets. The arena is right there in the neighborhood. You know, a lot of these arenas, like you got to go 20 minutes out of the city. 
The Barclays Arena, if you're not familiar with Brooklyn and Manhattan and New York City, Barclays is right there in the, the, the heart and soul, the guts of Brooklyn. Um, the rest of the NBA playoffs are shaping up like this. Hopefully, uh, the Golden State Warriors are, are, are going to uh, finish off the Clippers. I love the Clippers, but uh, the Warriors need their rest. Uh, they're going to uh, wind up uh, most likely, unless Utah really extends this series, because Utah's playing the um, Houston Rockets tonight. This episode is in prime time. Tonight, Wednesday, April 24th, uh, the Toronto Raptors finished off the Orlando Magic, and the Boston Celtics are playing the Milwaukee Bucks. NBA action is fantastic. I love it. And last night with Dame Dollar, that shot right to the dome piece for the 50 piece, 50 points from Dame Dollar uh, was the highlight of the first round so far. I got to tell you, I'm feeling real feisty. Me. The Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. Mr. New York, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a., a.k.a. The White Chocolate Tito. I'm feeling real feisty. I'm feeling real disruptive, okay? And when I'm feeling feisty and I'm feeling disruptive, I like to poke. I like to poke around and I like to prod, okay? I'm sick and tired of all these. Oh, you, you, you know the fucking guy Wojcikowski on ESPN? You know Woj, Mr. Insider, fucking nerd? Mr. Fucking, uh, I, I don't think he can make 10 free throws in a row. I can. Yeah, that's right. I can. I can make 10 layups in a row on each hand. I can do that anytime, any day, even with my bad knee, which is feeling better. Thanks for asking. These guys think they're all fucking, uh, uh, they're all clued in and they got this GM's uh, phone number and they get this inside track. I, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with you, Woj. Fucking blocked me on, uh, on Twitter. You blocked me, the gringo man dingo. You fuck you. Bill Simmons, that guy, remember when I fucking buried him? Buttoned up Bill Simmons, pretentious fuck. Feeling real frisky because when it comes to this shit talking life, this disruptive behavior, I'm the fucking captain. Me. I'm the captain. I'm the fucking guy. I'm the guy who goes out on a limb. Okay, 15 rounds. That's why they call me the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. 15 rounds. Okay, you got to be able to give it. Okay, as well as you could take it. Or should I say you got to be able to take it as well as you can give it. And I'm standing in the pocket for 15 rounds. Now, let me explain something to you guys. You know that the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is now on Luminary Media, correct? Does everybody know that? Okay, the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is now a part of Luminary Media. The best, it is the best podcast app in the world. It is now live and available for free. It's a free download on your Apple or Android devices. And we have tailored our podcast sound for quality, the best quality on Luminary. So the listening experience goes to a whole new level. We pride ourselves. We pride ourselves on having the best of the best listening experience. You are now listening to me, the Gringo Man Dingo. If you are listening on Luminary in HD, listen to it. You hear the sultry sounds of the Gringo Man Dingo. That is HD sound. Now, I just want to make a few things clear. Number one, the I Am Rappaport app will no longer have episodes featured on it so you can delete it. You can delete the old I Am Rappaport app. Number two, every single episode of the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, every single episode we've ever done is available now for you to listen to as it was meant to be heard on Luminary in high quality HD sound. And number three, on May 20th, Luminary will be the only place you can find the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. We are going to be on Luminary Premium along with 40 plus other fantastic exclusive shows such as What Now with my man Arian Foster, which I just did. So check that out on Luminary right now. Sign up. For Luminary today at luminary.link slash Rappaport and get the first three months of premium free. It's not just the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. There are 40 plus other 
fantastic, crafted, hand-picked, dope, high-end podcast on Luminary. We never, ever, ever fuck the fans. We're never, ever going to fuck the fans. I pledge my allegiance to go even harder, to disrupt even more and more often than ever before. The Rapper Pack, I will not fuck you. I will not fuck the fans. Again, if you plan on fucking each other, do it. I don't want to know anything about it. Okay? I don't want to know anything about it, but I will say this. The support has been incredible and overwhelming already, but we need every single one of you to join us on Luminary because I vow to disrupt more than ever. I don't want to lose. I don't want to confuse any of the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast fans. If you're in a country where Luminary is not available yet, and I've heard from people in Mexico, the Netherlands, Ireland, Thailand, I see it all. Miles Davis and Jordan Winter, they see it all. Make sure you go to luminarypodcast.com and say that you need the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast in your country. Right now, we can be heard in the United States, Canada, UK, and Australia, but that's not enough for the worldwide phenomenon. I appreciate all the support, okay? So do the Dust Brothers. Sign up, go to luminary.link slash Rappaport. That's luminary.link slash Rappaport, trust me, this is the best podcast app ever created. I am Rappaport Podcast. Old man, Bernie Sanders, um, who, I'll be honest... He was the guy that I was thinking I would vote for as of now. Listen, this election is going to have left turns, right turns, and flip-flop drops before it happens, uh, before the uh, the other guy takes on Dick Stain, Donald Trump. But I was thinking, Bernie's going to be the guy. He came sort of close uh, a, a few years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, he stepped into the, uh, the pocket. Everybody likes Bernie. Um, and I felt like Bernie Sanders was going to be the guy, um, that I would vote for. And as of right now, I, I can't fuck with Bernie Sanders, um, because, you know, this socialist bullshit, and I don't want to offend anybody. Okay. I don't want to alienate any listeners. Okay. But just hear me out. Bernie said some wild ass shit the other day. Okay, and it's not even about me personally. It's really just about uh, uh, beating Dick Stain Donald Trump. But but this, I will say, in, in all my time of paying attention to politics, and we all know it's not been very long, I am not a highly educated person when it comes to politics. I'll be the first to say that. Okay, I don't have some long track record of following politics and politicians and putting my stamp of approval and a lot of think, a lot of thought into it. I know sports. I know acting. I know life. Okay, I know film. Okay, I know music. I know a few things about a few things. I don't know a lot about politics, but to listen to Bernie Sanders the other day, I watched him say it, then I watched him say it again. To, to listen to Bernie Sanders in, you know, in his presidential campaign say that he thinks that felons, convicted felons in jail have a right to vote bugged me out. Now, listen, I know there's different levels. One of my good friends is a felon. He got caught 20-something years ago with a handgun. It was an unloaded handgun. He did a few months on Rikers Island, okay? He hasn't had any trouble ever since, okay? He's got a beautiful family. He's a fantastic husband and a fantastic father. He can't vote. I know there's different levels to being a felon, but we're talking about 180-something thousand murderers, 160-something thousand convicted rapists, convicted rapists and murderers. Bernie Sanders said that those people should have the right to vote. While he was doing this thing on CNN, the girl said, so you're saying, I think it was taking place in Boston or Rhode Island, so you're saying the Boston Marathon bomber should have a right to vote? Bernie doubled down and said, yes, fuck all that. If you rape, if you kill, fuck you. 
If you're a violent crime person, if you beat up somebody, an innocent person, if you beat up my cousin, you fuck my cousin, you kill somebody, your vote means nothing. It's a privilege. And also, let me tell you something else. Okay, the last presidential election had the lowest voter turnout ever. More people go to Coachella, more people are on Instagram, more people are doing YouTube videos than worrying about voting. And we're talking about fucking prisoners who were in there for violent crimes, murderers and rapists. Get the fuck out of here. Not to mention the felons who may have fucked your dog. That's right. You think I want a guy who fucks cows, who may have uh, fucked chickens voting? No, you're, you're off the grid as far as I'm concerned. You fuck my dog? Your vote doesn't count. You don't get to vote. That's part of your punishment. Now, if you want to talk about people that are rehabilitated 20 years later, like my friend, that's a different subject. But this fucking guy, Bernie, who I like, he's Jewish. I'm Jewish. I like him in general. I feel like he's an honest guy. You're talking about uh, murderers and convicts and the Boston Marathon bombers should vote? Sorry. Sorry. I know there's, there's different levels to this. Okay. Not to mention the people that are fucking farm animals. You're not voting. If you're sick enough and deranged enough to fuck my cow, okay, your vote doesn't count. Now, let me tell you a story. This weekend, this past weekend, I was at my friend's house. They got a beautiful house, okay. In their backyard, I mean, big house, nice house. Uh, 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 they have a chicken coop, okay. And they have about six chickens in the chicken coop. Really nice. They got it all hooked up. It's like fucking teak. And, and, and you know, they got a... Pr these, are, these are wealthy people, okay? I'm not going to go into any more details about that. But they got kids and all that shit. So they house these chickens and they, they eat the eggs. You know, they're, they're the, these types of people. They're very fucking wealthy. Okay, so he shows me the chicken coop. My friend's husband showed me the chicken coop. Like, this is fucking cool. So I, I go back there and I'm like looking at the chickens. I'm like, holy shit, I've never had this access to chickens. He's telling me, yeah, we eat the eggs. I go, do you eat the chickens? He goes, no, we only eat the eggs. I go, all right. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, this is really nice. And he goes, I'm going to go back in the house. I go, oh, I want to you know, check out the chickens. And I'm thinking to myself, what if when he went back in his house, and this is Easter Sunday, uh, you know, I'm Jewish, but I was there eating the food. Uh, uh, you know, hanging out with friends. I'm thinking to myself, uh, what if when uh, my friend uh, uh, went back in his house to go deal with his kids, whoever he was doing, I fucked his chicken. He comes back out. Uh, one of his chickens is limping. Uh, one of his chickens is gasping for air. Uh, one of his chickens is, is not uh, behaving correctly. Do you think this guy would ever let me back in his house? I don't think so. And then uh, when he, he calls the police, he goes, oh, listen, uh, the gringo man, Dingo, was, was at my house for Easter. We were over there having uh, a little Easter lunch and some caviar and some lasagna and this, that. And, and I went to go check on my kids. And when I came back, one of my chickens uh, was uh, uh, throbbing, uh, was swollen in, out of his ass. And I believe uh, Mr. Rappaport may have violated one of my chickens. And next thing you know, I get arrested for fucking uh, this gentleman's chickens. Uh, uh, do you think this guy uh, is ever going to want me, number one, back in his house? And do you think my vote counts? I don't think so. See, and that's what I'm saying about Bernie Sanders. That, that's my point, is that if I fuck your chicken, my, I lost my rights. I'm nuts. If, if I don't know right or wrong about whether or not I fuck my friend's chicken on Easter Sunday, uh, then I don't know right or wrong who to vote for. All votes count. Uh, uh, people spend more time and spend more energy going to Coachella to watch Kanye West roll around in the grass and cry and not sing any of his hits than energy they spend on voting. Don't worry about the fucking rapists and the murderers, and the violent criminals, and the felons, some of which who are good friends like my friend, who unfortunately can't vote anymore, uh, Bernie, because we have bigger fish to fry. This is why I'm concerned that Dick Stain Donald Trump is going to win again with all this wacky fucking bullshit. All this wacky bullshit and this divided, divisive bullshit from the Democrats. I don't know. I just want Dick Stain Donald Trump to go. That's all I want. Okay, and I know there's there's uh, minutia and there's innuendo to politics 
And, and I said it at the top of this rant, and I'll say it again. I am not Mr. Politics, okay? So when you DM me, well, I heard you on the podcast, you said, that I, I just said, I'm not Mr. Politics. But in order to beat Dick Stain, Donald Trump, there, un- there needs to be a united front. Not every single person coming out of the Democratic Party, every single one of them, all has different views, different takes on these things. It's going to wind up biting us in the ass. And if it doesn't get together real quick, I mean real fucking fast, four more years of dirty draft dodging dick stain Donald Trump is on the way. I could go for four more years. I have no problem. I could deal with it. I'm not going to stand in the streets and cry and no, like that fucking lady. No, you want to fucking uh, make a change? Get the fuck out there and vote. Stop fucking wasting your time at Coachella and your fucking bullshit YouTube videos that no one's watching, freaks. I am Rappaport Podcast. Now, is San Francisco in the house? I'll say it again. Is San Francisco in the house? Because I'm coming up there May 18th, May 18th, and May 19th at Cobb's Comedy. May 18th and May 19th, stand-up comedy. Tickets are still available at Cobbscomedy.com. C-O-B-B-S-C-O-M-E-D-Y. May 18th and May 19th at Cobb's comedy and then on june 2nd i'm going to be at the san diego american comedy company come see me in san diego on sunday june 2nd tickets are still available for that show at americancomedyco.com americancomedyco.com i post all of it i hope you follow us on instagram twitter and all that at michael rapaport or at i am Rappaport for the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. And I'm going to be rocking here in Los Angeles uh, tonight, which is late uh, late notice, but I'm going to be rocking tonight at the Laugh Factory and I'm going to be rocking at the Comedy Store. And then Friday night, uh, Friday, April 26th, I'm going to be at the Laugh Factory uh, at the 7.30 show. And then Saturday night uh, at uh, the 27th, April 27th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Store. I think it's the 7 p.m. show. I post all that shit on my story. I post all of it on Twitter and blah, 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 blah. I would love some Iron Rapport Stereo podcast fans to come uh, come see me rock. Um, big Three's coming, yo. The Big Three is coming. Season three of The Big Three is coming. And um, it looks like I'm going to be able to make it out to the draft next week in Vegas, which I'm excited about. I know they were going to announce the schedule uh, for the dates of uh, where the uh, games are taking place, but there's going to be some weekends where it's uh, Saturdays and Sundays, a bunch of good players, Lamar Odom, uh, uh, you know, Birdman's coming back, uh, tons of players. I'm not fact checking, uh, but there's, there's tons of different players. Uh, some of the guys that have been playing and a bunch of new dudes are going to the combine. There's going to be a lot of dope, uh, uh, players who don't get drafted into the big three. Uh, they added a few teams, but the big three is coming and it's going to uh, it's going to be very competitive. And of course, I have unprecedented, unprecedented access to all things big three. Miles Jordan, please give me the sick fuck of the week theme music. This is an award that is earned, not given. Earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. She's really fucking sick, man. She's fucking whack. Why? Make him stop. You smell like a sick fuck. You look like a sick fuck. That ain't supposed to be on a plane, you sick fuck. What are you doing? Hey, man, leave that chicken alone. Leave the chicken alone. What are you doing to the chicken? That doesn't belong in a chicken. You hear it. Yes, that's the sick fuck of the week theme song. The I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast award winning segment. The sick fuck of the week is awarded to a person who has a certain uh, 
a certain je ne sais quoi about them, a certain something, a star making quality. Let's get right into it. In St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. I don't, yeah, this is a sick fuck because she was married to him. You don't get any passes. The wife of a Missouri Ku Klux Klan leader admitted a few days ago to fatally shooting her husband. If you look up a picture of this woman, uh, Melissa Ancana, she looks like, bingo, a sick fuck. She pleaded guilty to second degree murder and tampering with evidence plus abandonment of a corpse. Lock her up. You ain't never ever, ever getting out of jail. Update. Update on some sick fucks. Remember, see, this is just what I was talking about with Bernie Sanders. This is just what I was talking about, Bernie Sanders. Uh, These guys were awarded uh, the sick fucks of the week uh, a couple of months ago. This is a trio, the Pennsylvania men, three Pennsylvania men. Remember these guys who sexually assaulted more than a dozen animals for over a five- year period Matthew Brubaker Mike Menzikoff and Terry Wallace who were arrested in 2018 and were charged with having sex with nine horses a cow a goat and dogs over the past five years these fucks were sentenced to up to 41 years in prison 20 to 41 years for for forcing themselves on a cow, a goat, nine horses, not one horse. They fucked nine different horses and an unspecified number of dogs. Okay, a teenage boy was allegedly tasked with restraining the animals while the twisted trio committed their bizarre crimes. This is what the fuck I'm talking about here. Do you think these three sick, truly sick fucks have a right to anything? What the fuck do they know about voting? What the fuck do they know about right and wrong? How can you have the choice to vote if you don't even know that it's not okay to fuck my dog? You get off my dog, you cocksucker, you. That's my cow. That's my pet. I don't want you fucking it. And since you fucked my cow and various other animals and goats and unspecified numbers of dogs, and this is just what we know about, you don't get to vote ever again. Forget the violent offenders. Forget the murderers. I don't want these three sick fucks to ever have say in anything ever again. Nor would you if they fucked your cows. Thank God they've locked them up. Thank God they're not coming out of jail for a long period of time. In Arkansas, a woman says she lost her mind when she killed her husband for watching porn. Duh. You think? 69-year-old Patricia Ann Hill has pleaded guilty to shooting her husband. 65-year-old Frank Hill. She found out he had been watching porn online and she killed him. And she says, yes, I lost my mind. No shit. No shit. Okay. Uh, Again, again, my man is 65. You're 69. If you look at this woman, uh, uh, they've probably been married for a long time. Although they said they were estranged, whatever. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, what you do in your privacy uh, uh, when you're alone, uh, that's up to you. Whatever your relationship is, that is up to you. You don't have to kill the guy for watching no-nos. And that's what she did, which is essentially a a no-no. So yeah, you lost your mind. Yeah, you're never getting out of prison. This is not a sick fuck. This is just bad luck. This is a sad story. A guy named Andrew Maylard, okay? A guy named Andrew Maylard who spent 12 years in a prison in West Australia. I don't know anything about uh, uh, West Australia, East Australia, but he spent 12 years in prison in Australia for a crime that he didn't commit, okay? 
He was in prison for 12 fucking years. Uh, uh, they found out that he was not guilty. He was released. He was on vacation in Los Angeles. This poor fuck got killed in a hit and run while visiting Los Angeles. I mean, that is just, that is terrible, terrible, terrible luck. Um, finally, this, this is just nuts, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. Just watch. I don't get it. Okay, from a, a, from a BDSM to threesomes, uh, the fetishes are, 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 listen, do you have no shame in your sex game, but I just don't get it. Okay, so they, they, they now have, because people have uh, a fetishes for feet, okay? So they have silicone feet. People want to uh, roll around and rub the silicone feet on their body. Uh, uh, the, the silicone feet uh, have like a vibrating thing. Okay, maybe this is, uh, I don't know, this is like a weird gag at a cocktail party. No, that wasn't enough. The silicone feet now uh, where the ankles are have vaginas. Yeah, you heard me. They have built-in vaginas. So it's a foot that you could rub all over. And then at the end, if that's not enough, if that doesn't get you where you need to get to, and I hate to use this language, but you can fuck the silicone foot vagina. What's going on? Who wants these? Why do you need this? What's wrong with you? You want to fuck somebody's silicone feet vaginas? This is not even realistic. You can't fuck ankles. Now, you understand what I'm saying? They're just feet. They have silicone feet. And at the top where the ankles are, you could stick your penis in there. This is way out there. What kind of sick fucks want this as a sexual device? Do you? Do you? Okay, I don't know what this is. This is way beyond anything that I could wrap my head around. When it comes, listen, I don't like to talk sex. I know my mom is listening. Okay. Somebody said, what's your limitations on what you'll talk about uh, on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast? And one of the things is my sex life. Now, if me, the gringo man thing, if I was into having sex with silicone feet, not having sex, this is not having sex, jerking off with silicone feet, let's call it what it is. If that's the way I needed to jerk, I mean, listen, if that's what I was into, I wouldn't mention it on the I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my mother to know about it. My mother, like I, when I see my mom, I hug my mom, she'd be like, what happened to you, Michael? What, what do you, well, this is what you do? Like I heard you on your podcast and now you're, you're jerking off with silicone feet? I, I don't want it. This is not for me. It's not something I'm into. Uh, I'm freaky deaky, but I ain't that freaky deaky. Listen, it's the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast in primetime. They call it Prime Time Podcasting, okay? This is Prime Time Podcasting at its finest. Uh, we will be back Friday with another full, hard-hitting I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast episode friday april 26th i usually don't do dates because these things live in infamy okay but when we jump up and we break it down during the middle of the week i like to give a little perspective um so uh what can i say um i appreciate all the support to all the listeners who uh, are keeping track of, of where to listen to the i am rapport stereo podcast i vow to not give up i vow to go harder in the paint i vow to continue to disrupt everything and anything in my way. I'm so impressed, so hyped. I couldn't even fall asleep last night after watching Dame Dollar and the four NBA games. You win some, you lose some. Okay? All my Philadelphia fans, don't be so sensitive. You guys threw fucking snowballs at Santa Claus. It's the playoffs. There's got to be good guys and bad guys. Joel B wants to be the funny, likable bad guy. Well, he's on my bad guy list. Uh, ben Simmons, can you form a full sentence? He's like, oh, I'm a man of mystery. Duke, you, you need to work work on your jump shot. Good luck versus the Toronto Raptors. The second round of the NBA playoffs is going to be even better than the first. Some of the best matchups we could have ever wanted out of the NBA. My name is the Gringo Man Dingo. My name is the White Chocolatito. This is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I am the Jake LaMotta of podcasting, a.k.a. Mr. New York, a.k.a. Mr. A.K.A. Miles Jordan, take me out of here with something real nice, something real proper, and most importantly, yes, I need it. I need it. Take me out of here with something real funky. I'm done. <laughs>